this is Coltrane teaching us how to play epic solos. When you take out quite difficult lines out of the Coltrane solo of Giant Steps and add these into normal 2-5-1s, you get some really nice connecting and super strong lines. I've learned so much from Coltrane by analyzing the lines he's playing. To get these into your playing is rather simple. Find a small connecting line and give it a functional name. Get a taste of the line by training it in different exercises. And then add the line to different contexts. I want to take you through some of the important connecting lines that Coltrane use. Get an insight in how he connects practice and playing music. And by using his method you'll probably come to the conclusion that his approach gives you the strongest lines ever. Let's get started. This pattern needs no introduction, the arpeggio is so important. For clarity I'll take all the examples I'm giving into the key of F major on the tenor saxophone. But when we play it we need to make it interesting. What I see Coltrane do a lot in his solos is of course playing up and down that arpeggio. But he's also playing the arpeggio from the third, adding an upper structure giving him the 9 on the chord. In this lick you see how easily I'm using the upper structure on that G minor 7, getting a G minor 9, adding that B flat major 7. And in the previous lick you probably also saw that I'm using the E half diminished 7 chord as an upper structure on that C7. The upper structure 7th chord played from the 3rd of the basic chord is so very common in jazz that you need to put this into your vocabulary. Which leads me to a great way to train the arpeggio and the upper structure arpeggio. Try playing around with these exercises and get this into your fingers. When you look at this exercise you can easily see that there are three places you can add the upper structures. On the F major, the G minor and the C7, the 2-5-1 in F major. On the F major 7 chord you add that A minor 7 chord. On the G minor you add that B flat major chord. And on the C7 you add that E half diminished 7 chord. The extensive training of these arpeggio also opens up your ears on how you can use them in other settings. Like here using the E half diminished and the G minor 7 on that G minor 7 chord. On Coltrane's solo and giant steps you of course see him use the upper structure arpeggio descending. Here on the E flat minor 7 chord. So when I'm practicing this I'm practicing the basic 7th chord and the upper structure chord as one unit to get the connection between the two that I never doubt what is the upper structure of this that I can play this in my dreams. When you want to add this into your music the real trick is to find a great place between the practice sessions and playing the music. And when I add this to a 2-5-1 lick you hear that the descending upper structure arpeggio sounds really great. When you take the upper structure arpeggios a step further you can actually use them in more ways than you think. Here I'm using both the B flat major 7 structure and the D minor 7 structure on that G minor 7 chord. And on that C7 in the second bar I'm jumping into that E7 half diminished chord. When you start composing your own lines wanting to use this material, start with what you know. So start simple, start with using these arpeggios. You don't have to play all kinds of fancy scales in between. Start with the arpeggio. I've chosen to call this little line the semitone. It's a row of leading tones going into that target note, the C. This semitone is actually the same line as the direct way into that C. But the G and the D have changed places. If you're creative with this you could add these two together getting a real Coltrane sound. You see the simplicity in joining the licks together. This is a way to compose beautiful lines. Always think of the most simple solution first. You can practice the semitone like this. Start exercising all these lines, find ways to practice them in the scale. And when you first start training like this you'll see there are so many ways to apply this. scale to this approach line and you get really great lines. And what you probably see is that I'm making licks on all steps of the scale because you really want to be flexible. No matter what scale step you're landing on you want to be able to add the semitone and come out on top with a beautiful line. Remember to practice the semitone thoroughly. Get this really into your fingers.
when you get the sway of the scimitar, add it into a 2-5 line. I've really tried not to overcomplicate things. On the C7, I'm adding the scimitar and just playing the scale down. The real power begins when you're transposing the lines into other keys. When you do this, making lines becomes so much easier, also in the other keys, because you get a super nice overview. Your brain really starts to work with the music. In the Lesson Manual PDF on Patreon, I have of course added all the exercises and all the licks in all 12 keys for you to get an easy start. Benefit from a much faster beginning and get the plug and play PDF manual. Links in the description. <laughs> As we stated in Coltrane's lines, there are all these small connecting phrases. And this phrase is almost similar to the previous phrase. The only difference is that this line ends with a scale phrase. And the other one begins with a scale phrase. But the effect is the same. The line is a small row of approach note that are leading directly into your target note. Going three steps up, jumping back to the note where you started. And the exercise to train it would look like this. I bet you can come up with a better exercise than this. Please leave a comment if you have a great exercise to train these super licks. In this little line you see that I'm using the little lick in more places, getting more flexible with this lick. The best thing is that the line doesn't suffer adding the same lick twice in the line. Of course for this line too it's so important to use the technical aspect of the line in your playing. <laughs> As soon as you possibly can, add these technical exercises into your music and try making them your own. When you listen to these short lines, you hear that they hit the mark, they are really hitting that target note right on the head. And the eye opener comes when you start hearing that you're going into a target note. When you hear that line and you hear that target note before you play the line. This makes these lines so powerful and the sound of them are so strong. When you're training these lines and adding them to the music, start thinking about what target note you're gonna hit. Get used to practicing the lines in all 12 keys and remember not to make it difficult for yourself keep it simple i have of course made all the transposing for you in the lesson manual you can find on patreon everything is in all 12 keys and of course there's many more licks and exercises too the link is in the description i'm still studying giant steps and some of my study i've turned into a video i really recommend you to take a deep dive into cold trains playing and learn giant steps take it easy and take it in small bits this will boost your skills so much play music have fun